Next is Dr. Lori Moore, also from the University of South Alabama. Through her education, she is prepared to care for and promote wellness to patients across the lifespan. She has been a preceptor for master and doctoral students to assist with the mastering of learning objectives and to facilitate <coughs> professional and skilled learning. As a certified family nurse practitioner, she is equipped through her education to create and implement evidence-based instruction through simulated experience, experiences. During the COVID-19 pandemic, she has worked closely with the simulation team to develop telehealth learning scenarios for medical, nursing, and allied health students to facilitate safe and effective distance learning. She has participated in the development of interprofessional scenarios that enhance learning in a multidisciplinary fashion. She is internationally certified as a healthcare simulation educator. Through this certification, she is competent in developing objective-driven educational experience among all disciplines to enhance learning through simulation. One of her responsibilities as an assistant professor, professor at this College of Nursing is to enhance family nurse practitioner education using uh, their on-campus simulation center and a standardized patient program to achieve optimal learning outcomes. She has published nursing and simulation articles in peer-reviewed journals. Okay, we have to 1140, so by like 1135, if you're not done, we'll stop and um, see if there are any questions. Okay. Um, all right. Again, I am Lori Moore and Dr. Harris. I'm like, my screen's yeah. not allowing <laughs> two faces to pop up here at once. So um, this is the virtual OSCE solutions for nurse practitioner students during COVID is what we work together on. And just a a little background on what we're doing here at the University of South Alabama. We have one of the largest advanced practice nurse practitioner programs. We have 11 separate NP tracks in the advanced practice registered nurse program and 10 different specialty tracks in the master's and doctorate programs. Our tracks include OB, or women's health, um, pediatrics, emergency, dual role, family, et cetera, neonatal. Um, each one of these tracks require specialty areas like every other um, university in order to successfully pass and graduate. Currently, we have 974 family nurse practitioner students here and they all um, test or they all attend remotely. So the reason we came up with this um, program was because during COVID, everybody could not come to campus because of social distancing. So we had to figure out a way to um, deliver this test that is required for them to pass. And so the difference is in the nurse practitioners versus the medical in school instruction is all the medical school, the LCME, that's the, who decides the accreditation standards for the medical school, they require all medical students to take this, it's called an OSCE, O-S-C-E, and I'll tell you about that in just a second, but they don't require our nursing program does not require this test for nursing, uh, our nurse practitioner students. Um, the Objective Structured Clinical Examination is what the OSCE stands for, and it's essentially an objective test where they have to see live patients, complete a history of physical, and come up with a diagnosis and a, a plan of care. And for it to qualify as an OSCE, they must see at least two patients. And this is for what medical school uh, requires. So then we decided since family nurse practitioners do um, history physical and diagnose patients to come up with a plan, our family nurse practitioner faculty required our family nurse practitioner students only, that's the only track that requires it, to complete and successfully pass an OSCE station, um, seeing two patients um, beginning in 2018. So what we had to do was we had to figure out a way um, for these students that all typically attend remotely. They do come to campus once during their entire program to complete some simulation skill requirements on, at our simulation on campus facility. And the OSCE students also have to come, the family nurse practitioner students, they complete their OSCE at the very end of their program on campus, but since we had COVID, we could not let them come to campus. So we had to figure out a way to deliver 
what typically is an on-campus event virtually. So we use the Zoom platform and the Learning Space platform, which is what we use in healthcare simulation, where they can actually write their notes and um, the faculty can grade them. The master inventory rating scale, sorry, mirrors is how our standardized patients would rate and grade the students. Our standardized patients, we have roughly 160 standardized patients now, and they actually are, are patients that we train on the cases and we pay them um, for that. So we have a pretty large standardized patient program here. Learning space um, is also where the simulation faculty also graded the video part of the physical exam um, for standardization. And this was the difficulty is that we could grade the physical exam while they were on campus because the students typically are able to auscultate lung sounds and complete a physical exam in person. So we had to create a rubric for them to verbally um, complete their physical exam remotely. Our grading criteria consisted of um, to, re to reach their 100%, 60% of the grade was on the computerized note, which we changed the weight for this because we did not want, we usually weigh heavy on the physical examination, but since they were not able to come to campus and most of the physical examination was just verbalized as to what they would do and how they would do that, we changed the grading criteria. 60% would be their, their written note, which included their history and physical diagnosis and planning. 20% was the communication, which our standardized patients graded them on the mirrors inventory rating scale, which was how do they communicate with them? Did they make good eye contact? Did they ask if they had any questions? Were the instructions clear? Were they kind? Would they actually want to see them? If they were a real nurse practitioner, um, would they want to come back to them? And were their instructions clear? Did they show empathy and things like that? And then 20% was based on a physical examination uh, rubric that we created. Our standardized patients we have, these are our patients that we pay to act like patients. We have level one, which is novice, two intermediate, and three, which is expert. We only use level threes for the OSCE examinations since they are a summative examination and it is required for them to make at least an 80%. The students must make an 80% to graduate in December and all students will come through sometime in October and November to take this one last final examination to, um, to see if they can graduate. So we only use the expert standardized patients on this. We typically train just two hours for a regular non-summative um, examination. For the OSCEs, we train for two separate two-hour trainings, which actually involve the standardized patients practicing the cases with each other with a simulation faculty member present. We also had to then train our standardized patients on the Zoom process because some of our patients are elderly and one of our standardized patient cases was a 60 year old female uh, male having chest pain. So we had to instruct our 60 year old demographic males on how to actually even navigate through the Zoom process and the new Zoom platform, which probably was the most challenging part. Um, so our encounter details, these were our st two standardized patients. Each student had to rotate through each one of these patients, complete a history, um, complete a verbalized physical, and come up with a diagnosis. And so we would have a standardized patient that fit the criteria of a 60-year-old male complaining of a chief complaint of a chest pain and a 48-year-old female complaining with burning upon urination. The entire encounter was a two hour encounter. The first 30 minutes for standardization, which is very important when it comes to simulation, the same faculty member, which was me, would give them all of the instruction on how to navigate through the Zoom, how, what the process was gonna be, what their instructions were in detail. They were all sent all this information well before they arrived to campus or for this event well before they participated in this event via Zoom. The next one and a half hours is where they actually would see the first patient, complete the entire process, write their computerized notes, transfer over to the next patient and do the same thing. The one change we did versus the um, typical medical school OSCE for our nurse practitioner, our family nurse practitioner students is that we um, wanted to include um, a plan of care. Most OSCE uh, examinations do not 
um, have a, a detailed plan of care. But our faculty wanted to make sure that they understood what the diagnosis and the plan of care would be. So they added a 30 minute session at the end to quiz them on the diagnosis and plan that they would have given that patient that they just saw. And that seemed to be effective. We would give the students the contact information, uh, the person, we had um, one of our simulation staff who was assigned specifically for any technical difficulties, such as when you're testing folks from all over the country, you have lightning storms or somebody has low Wi-Fi connection. And so we would make sure that we could get, get them reconnected if they got logged on, what to do. We also had an additional simulation um, staff member who simply moved students from room to room and the standardized patients from room to room. Um, we also had multiple notifications that would populate through the Zoom platform to make sure that the students knew how much time they had and the standardized patients would knew how much time they had to grade before the next student would arrive to their Zoom breakout room. So what we found is we had 160 family nurse practitioners completed the OSCE examination um, the semester uh, in 2020, what was that? 2020, I think is when it was. Okay, and so these OSCE, these OSCE examinations occurred over a two day event over about, I'm not even sure how many sessions that we had, but in order to get 160 students through, um, we have to do small groups of eight or less. So we can do the math on that. So we had several around, I think eight different two day sessions to get all of the students through, all through October and November, and these students were to graduate in December. So the good news was all but two were successful in completing the OSCE with an 80% or higher. The, uh, the two that were not successful completely just got nervous, walked in, essentially walked in and walked out, did not complete a physical exam at all, and just kind of froze. So they were required to uh, remediate with their college of nursing, family nurse practitioner faculty, and they were not allowed to graduate in December because part of our, um, and just like every other university is, we wanna make sure that we ensure that our nurse practitioner, distant learners are able to correctly collect a history, perform a physical exam, diagnose and um, populate a, plan of care for the patient. 72% of the students said they felt more success, uh, more prepared to successfully um, complete a history and physical on patients once they graduate after attending the OSCE. And um, we do think for future research and implications that OSCEs currently for medical school and for the ones we have on nurse practitioner are in person. They are live and um, in case there's another pandemic, they can be modified. But we did find that we would prefer students to come to campus for the physical exam portion because there was nothing that we found that we could do that would simulate um, a virtual physical exam as well as you know, comparable to them completing their physical exam on campus. We are talking to the other tracks at our university to see if the other faculty members with the other, you know, 20-ish tracks um, will begin to require those nurse practitioner students to come to campus and complete an OSCE because currently the family nurse practitioner um, faculty are the only ones that require this. Does anybody have any questions? I, of course, have a question. Of course. <laughs> of course. So my first question would be, have you seen any difference in your board scores since implementing this for your family nurse practitioner students, has it caused an increase is what I would expect. And I'm wondering if that's what you saw. An increase in the board scores? Yes, from the family, or you're talking about the OSCE overall, our real normal traditional delivery where they come to campus. Yes, our board scores have improved from that, which is another thing we should write about. <laughs> yeah, so. because I, I, it, it's important. And this to me sounds like, well, if the med students have to do it, and we're going in and seeing some of the same patients, why wouldn't you? I think it's a great idea, although the students may not, but. <laughs> no, the, the students do not like it at all because one of the luxuries in completing their nurse practitioner programs are they can be from all over the country 
in the world and take and complete our program. So they do not like com coming to campus. <laughs> and so the family nurse practitioner students actually have to come to campus twice. So they all nurse practitioner students must come to campus the one time I discussed where they have to complete their hands-on simulation skills, whether it be chest tubes or thoracentesis, paracentesis, whatever track they're in, if it's neonatal, lumbar punctures, um, they have to come to campus so we can observe them in person completing the skill before we release them out into the world. But the family nurse practitioners are the only track that actually have to come at the end and complete the OSCE. And so it really does, um, as one of the family nurse practitioner faculty members, it really does help ease our minds knowing that we see them perform this because it's really difficult if anybody else actually works in the family nurse practitioner tracks at their universities to monitor how well these students are actually performing in the clinical setting. So we actually get to observe at least a piece of that. I know you have preceptors and faculty site visits, but it's really hard to ensure that they're actually performing safe and effective care. So this is one way we're trying to um, ensure that they are. Yeah. And so our, from what your first part of the answer, what you were saying was the online OSCE didn't maybe do as much for your board scores as the in-person? No, um, I don't remember exactly what those board scores were, but I would think not because I did not find that they um, measured the same competency with a physical exam. It was just, we gave them a lot of prompts, we gave them scripts almost, and we gave a lot of leeway on that because just like everybody else that was scrambling during COVID, we just didn't know what else to do. And we had to do it to be standardized with all of the other cohorts that came through. So I did not find that verbalizing a physical exam was as, as good as the physical exam on campus. Gotcha. Dr. Merck, did you have a question? I see you um, are on video. Well, she just answered my question. I was going to ask, you know, was there a difference between the face-to-face uh, -face and the online? Was there a difference in the board scores? But uh, I got another question. <clears throat> what about, um, ha have you thought about having the students record, video record them doing um, a physical assessment. They do that in the physical assessment course. We have in our ND5, 518, mm -hmm. I think it's the course, we have a physical exam course where they have to physically send in their videos for every body system. And, but that's a, a, a semester or two earlier. That's before they actually begin their clinical rotations. So we thought about possibly doing that um, for that OSCE. Um, but we decided against it because I can't remember exactly why we decided against that. We decided that we wanted it to be in the time frame that we have set with all the other cohorts. And if we allow them to video something, then they would have had extra time that the other students did not have because they we had time built in for them to actually complete their physical exam. So I believe that's why we decided against that. Um, we do... Um, we. We did think about that, and that really is a good idea. And moving forward, we hopefully we never have another global pandemic. But if we do, moving forward, it, it was still one of our ideas that we could explore more, you know, further. Well, I'd like to applaud you um, for. I mean, it is a very well thought out, detailed, down to the minutest, uh, you know, unit. So that's. Excellent. I think this would be a model for most other programs. Well, I appreciate it. By no means is 30 minutes enough time to talk about just what our faculty and staff had to do under a great deal of pressure to perform like everybody else out there when you have to completely change a process of a pass-fail graduate physical exam uh, it, it was it was quite stressful, but we managed, and now I'm glad that they're back on campus because our simulation uh, department has been up and running the entire time. We've just had to have students wear masks or the standardized patients wear masks or verbalize and things, but we only were down for about two months, and we've been trying running 
through ever since. And our our um, simulation department is a standalone building on our campus. So mm -hmm. that we provide services and all the skills for, you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy, med schools, nursing schools, undergraduate nursing, nurse practitioners. So we, oh gosh, EMS, we also do flight um, paramedics and things that are not actually students here. So we've got a pretty large simulation building and we are, I'm super pass passionate about it because you just can't always teach a student um, what they need to know by lecturing via PowerPoint or in the classroom. So when we can actually apply the didactic course material to a real life simulation, I just think the students get a lot out of it. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have a question? I do have another. Um, sure. I, I'm curious. We in our RNWS, and of course, we have a health assessment course, and we've been using um, instead of having people video each other, we've been using Shadow Health. And I know they have advanced assessment models uh, or courses for Shadow Health. Is that anything you ever considered? I'm just curious. Um, I'm unfamiliar with Shadow Health. Do you know anything about that? I, I do not. We have tried, I don't know how many platforms and how many delivery um, platforms we've used to try to get the students. We've used, but now we are just allowing them to upload any video that they can. Um, and as long as we can open it, that's what, it just seems to work the best for the students. And then we have rubrics that we follow through the, our Bates reference, you know, just basically that the faculty in that course have just created rubrics. So they just follow a rubric. So I'm not familiar with that platform, delivery platform. Yeah, Shadow Health provides a course and they have a, oh, what's the right word for a person that you can, a patient, they can, you can actually, the student can talk to the patient. They can mark on the screen where they're going to listen. They have to do, you know, they can do lungs, they can do belly, they can do heart. Um, and it allows them to do this patient interaction, it's not 100% perfect because of sure. course, um, you know, if they ask a question that the information hasn't been put in, they, yes. you know, they, they can't answer them. But as long okay. as they're, but it allows them to see exactly how well they do on an exam, but to do it virtually without um, uploading, uploading a video. And it is in fact, like a standardized patient in that you know what's wrong with them. So- right what they're supposed to hear versus a, you know, a video. I was just wondering if you had heard of it because they're- No, but I need to look at that because that sounds like a, a really good tool that we could use in the future. Certainly if we had to have a remote OSCE again. Uh, yes, so Shadow Health is the name of the company. Shadow Health. Mm -hmm. um, but anyone else with a question for these ladies? I'm amazed at both of those poster presentations. I really like the OSCE. I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to look you up online and see what else you provide. <laughs> Absolutely. 